Hello there folks and welcome back. In our last video we took a brief look at this weird APU, the A9-9820. It's an interesting unreleased 8-core APU from AMD that has some similarities to the Xbox One. With 8 Jaguar cores, or maybe Excavator cores, we'll have to see about that, clocked at 2.35GHz and 384 stream processors at 948MHz, it's nothing to write home about for performance. For the same price you could get a much better performing Athlon 3000G and motherboard, but it's an interesting piece of kit nonetheless. Before we get to our benchmarking, we should clarify what what exactly the A9-9820 is, as there is still lots of unanswered questions, and as we'll see, just plain wrong information about what the A9-9820 is floating around the internet. There are some sources saying that the A9-9820 is based off the excavator architecture, which would mean it would not be an Xbox One APU, rather just a weird one-off 8-ish core APU. However, what I found is actually very interesting. It is indeed not an FX, bulldozer, excavator, or steamroller based chip as it is missing several of the instruction sets including AVX2, BMI2, and the TBM or trailing bit manipulation instruction set that all bulldozer based CPUs possess. The instruction sets that the CPU does have correspond exactly with what the Jaguar architecture has. As we know, the Xbox One uses these Jaguar cores. And as far as die size go, this is also very intriguing. The original Xbox is said to have a die size of 363 square millimeters. I took out my trusty caliper and measured the die to be about 21.7 millimeters wide and 16.7 millimeters high, which would give the A9-9820 a die size of 362.39 millimeters. That's well within the margin of error for measuring. So, it's the same microarchitecture as the Xbox One, it's got the same unique CPU core count, it's got the same Cryptos code name, and it has the exact same die size. There can be no doubt that this is indeed a cut down Xbox One APU. So, with that out of the way, let's get to the gaming benchmarks, as that's probably why you're here. For our testing, I will be using 16GB of CL11 DDR3-1600 with 11, 10, 10, 30 timings. The APU supposedly supports 1866MHz RAM, but for me it wouldn't boot with anything faster than 1600. It could be a RAM compatibility issue, as some other people who have gotten this board have had similar RAM issues. Anyhow, DDR3-1600 is what we are going to be using for now. In addition, the games are all on SSDs for minimal load time of textures and game assets. Also, for our testing we will be allowing the APU to access the maximum 2GB of RAM to give it the best shot in gaming performance benchmarks. The games and benchmarks we will be testing will be 3D Mark, Skydiver, Skyrim, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Squad, Civilization VI, Star Wars Squadrons, Overwatch, and Minecraft. I'm not expecting fantastic performance from this APU, however we will try our best to choose settings that will be playable, if any. So without further ado, let's get started. In 3D Mark Skydiver, we got a total score of 8698, a graphics score of 10228, and a physics score of 5093. So for graphical horsepower, that puts us about on par with a GT730, certainly nothing special. But the CPU was particularly bad at a score of 5093. That puts it about equivalent to a Q6600 overclocked to about 3.5 GHz, or a completely stock AMD A87670K APU. Certainly not what I would call good modern performance. We tested Skyrim at 720p high settings. 1080p was a bit too ambitious for this chip, so 720p it is. However, at these settings we did receive a decent average of 48 frames per second. It went as high as 62 when just strolling through the fields, and dropped as low as 29 during intense combat. One thing I did also notice that there are often noticeable and jarring frame time spikes when new large assets like forts and cities are loaded into video RAM. 
The next game that we tested was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I'll be honest, I was surprised that this chip could run it at all, but at 720p low settings it performed somewhat okay, I guess. Most of the time the frame rate hovered around 33 FPS, with it rising to 57 in more enclosed spaces. However, during action sequences in large open environments, the frame rates would dip and the frame times would spike, giving you noticeable and blatant input lag. Also, during these sequences, the frame rate would drop at times to a low of 16 frames per second. Squad was the next game that we benchmarked. This game was not an enjoyable or really even a playable experience. The fault mostly lies with the CPU's low clock speeds. Although we did test the game at 720p high settings, lowering the graphical parameters did nothing to increase the frame rate. At most we saw a high of 30, and most of the time the frame rate sat around 25 frames per second. Although the footage may make it seem like the average was even lower, when the benchmark overlay software was not running and using CPU power, the frame rate did climb a little bit. This same behavior happened in the only other majorly CPU bound game. The next game that we tested was Civilization VI at 1080p medium settings. Most of the time during gameplay, the frame rate hovered around the 31 FPS mark, with it reaching as high as 40 on occasion. There were some frame time spikes, which dropped the frame rate to a low of 16. Although the game is playable at these settings, you could easily make it a bit better by dropping the graphical quality a little bit. The turn time was also not terrible, however late game the turns do start to take a little while. Star Wars Squadron 720p low settings was the next game we tested. Due to the fluid motion and fast pace of this game, we targeted a higher frame rate, and on average, the game maintained a solid 61 FPS, with it only ever dipping to 41. And on occasion, it would climb as high as 82. This game is easily one of the best performing modern titles on this APU. We tested Overwatch at 720p low with a 100% render scale, and at these settings we got a pretty smooth performance, with the APU pumping out on average 48 frames per second. During really intense action, when all sorts of particle effects and characters were on screen, the game did dip to 17. However, during the calmer segments, the frame rate reached as high as 69. Nice. The last game we tested was the ever-faithful Minecraft benchmark at 1080p maximum settings. Graphically speaking, Minecraft can run on just about anything, but this CPU is the main bottleneck in this game. Just like in Squad, after removing the benchmarking overlay, the frame rate did climb, and on average Minecraft ran at around 73 frames per second. When in large open areas or when exploring, the frame rate dipped to 34 as the CPU struggled to spawn in the new chunks. However, when underground mining we got a high frame rate around 94. With all the benchmarks wrapped up, as we expected, the power of this APU is less than that of a full Xbox One chip, but it can still play games in a pinch. So yes, the A9-9820 can run games, but does it run them well? Or does it run them better than a similarly priced CPU motherboard combo? No, not really. An Athlon 3000G and a B450 or B550 motherboard would be a much better option. Unlike the A9-9820, the Athlon would be upgradable in the future, whereas this particular system is not. With such a weak CPU and mediocre GPU, there are certainly better out there for a practical build. However, if you just like collecting weird and unique hardware, this is certainly quite the find. An Xbox One APU in a PC. Can you? Yes. Should you? No.